What's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Classic Army Nemesis ME10. Now if you guys are like me and you have never used a classic army gun before, then this review should be very helpful for you guys. Just like I said, this is the first classic army that I've ever used. Honestly, it performs very, very well. Comparing to my Lancer Tactical Pro line, there are some differences that I prefer over this gun. But we're not going to get into that yet. Before we get into the review, let's talk about the unboxing. The box is standard for any class Grummy rifle. It's got the logo on the front with either gray or blue, depending on whichever gun you get. Flip the box open, you got a nice foam padding over top of the actual gun itself. Around the gun, you also have a bunch of foam protecting it in, during shipping. On top, you also get a manual. Very detailed manual. The manual is pretty standard. It just shows you how to insert your magazine, fill up your magazine, and insert a battery into your stock. Also access a quick change spring, which is also a feature of this gun. You're also going to get a 350 round high cap magazine, which is texturized. It is plastic as well. We have the gun itself. The gun itself is comprised entirely out of metal, exceptions of the pistol grip and the stock, obviously. Starting from front to back, from the front you do have a QD style flash hider, which is plastic. Lucky for me, the mystery box that I got this gun in came with a quick detach suppressor from Classic Army. So we just take it off, screw it back on. There's no button to push or anything, just goes right on. Covers your orange tip, uh, basically doesn't void your warranty without removing the orange tip, with, and you're also able to put a attach it on the front, which I think is pretty nice. Underneath that orange tip, you do have 14mm counterclockwise threads on a full metal outer barrel. Coming to the rail system, we do have an M-lock rail system with some nice triangle cuts in the top and bottom of the rail system itself. The top rail is monolithic with a front and rear metal flip-up sight. They can be lifted up easily, and then when you push them down, you push a button on the side of the sights to flip them down. Same thing for the rear sight. They have some nice little trademarks, I guess you could call them, on the front of the front and rear sight says folding battle sight classic army that's pretty cool coming back to the receiver set looking at the right side of the gun we do have the uh, fake bolt and dust cover the dust cover has an american flag on it and 223-556 on the dust cover itself pulling back the charging handle while holding down the bolt release the bolt does lock back setting it forward makes a very nice clicking sound the charging handle is also ambidextrous for you lefties out there. Inside for the hop-up unit, we have a rotary style hop-up which clicks into place, which is very nice. Not sure what the diameter of the barrel is, but I'm going to guess 6.03 tight bore. The ambidextrous features on this gun are, like I said, the charging handle. We also have the ambidextrous fire selector, which is safe semi-full auto, and an ambidextrous bolt release, along with an ambidextrous mag release. Flipping it to the left side of the gun, we do have some Nemesis trademarks right here on the magwell, along with a serial number right underneath. Coming down to the trigger guard, it is a fixed trigger guard, so you can't remove it or replace it, sadly, for those who like to replace their trigger guards. The trigger is a straight trigger and also has an ETU inside, so it does have a nice little, little clicking sound. This allows you to get great trigger response with an 11.1 LiPo. The pistol grip is like your standard A2 style, but a little bit more modified. It's got a nice golf ball texturing right here on the actual grip itself, along with some lines in the back strap and on the front with the little nub right here. Personally, I hate this little nub thing, but I just thought that would be worth noting. Down to the bottom of the pistol grip, it is a quick detach style pistol grip for the motor plate. You just remove one Allen screw and then pinch the tabs on the side, flip it open, and then you have access to your motor. Back behind the charging handle, we do have a full metal ambidextrous sling mount. You put a sling on either side of the sling mount. Coming all the way to the back, we have a full metal buffer tube. And then we also have the classic army BAS stock, which is a striking resemblance to the PTS EPS. This stock is actually really awesome. It has a lot of battery space in here. I fit a Titan 2600 11.1 LiPo down here. It doesn't fit down the canals of the side of the stock. I have to put the long part down the center of the buffer tube and then the short part down uh, vertically in the stock. The stock also has a nice loop right here for a sling. So if you want to run the sling on the stock instead of the sling mounts up here, you don't have any sling mounts on the front of the gun, so you will have to provide your own. The way you get to the battery compartment is pretty cool. You have a button on the bottom right here. You just slide down, slide the stock upward, and then here is your battery connections, which is a small Tamiya type battery. Putting it back on is just as easy as taking it off. Just slide it on, pull the tab down, and it's locked in place. 
The gun itself weighs about four to five pounds considering it is full metal. It is very maneuverable. It's not too heavy, but it is very ergonomic. I like how skinny the rail is. It's very nice to C-clamp if you're one of those fanboys who likes the C-clamp. I do it just because it's comfortable for me. But like I said, you do have those M-lock slots where you can put your rails on. You can put whatever foregrips you want. Now getting to the internals. We already touched up on the hop-up and the barrel. Now let's just get into the trigger system. This gun does have a programmable gearbox. The manual has a very detailed description on how to access that. I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't wanna mess with it, it's not my gun. But I will be putting some B-roll shots up of the manual so you guys can take a picture of it or whatever you want to show you know how to change the settings. Now let's take it to the chrono. So looking at the chrono results, we were getting ranges from about 340 to 360 FPS with a .2 gram BB. Pretty consistent with shots, honestly. I'd recommend using .28 with this gun if you guys are gonna be playing outdoor. If you do wanna play indoor, you do have that quick change spring. But that's basically it, you guys. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Thanks again to Fox Airsoft for hooking me up with this gun to do some videos on. If you guys want to check out this specific gun, check out the links in the description. Also, check out Fox Airsoft on Instagram. Follow them on YouTube and check out their website. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. What's up?